Well, Eddie, um, are we live? We are. Wow. Yeah, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on. Um, I have this theory. Look out. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I have this theory about. Um, you know how when we look into the future, or when when we see movies like say Star Trek, and we see, oh wow, the twenty third century, twenty fourth century. Look what they've got. They've got starships that can do warp faster than light travel. Wow, are we going to get that? And they've got phasers. And they've got transporters that beam you to the surface of a planet. And they have shields to protect the ship from attack. That must be amazing. So originally I thought, well, I see the smoke. I see it. Originally I thought... And I think a lot of people thought this is that some boffin, you know, so the scriptwriters went up to some scientists or whatever and goes, Tell us what you think is going to be in our future. What are the crazy, crazy things we're going to get in the future? He goes, Oh, we'll have spaceships and phasers and teleportation, blah, you know, all that sort of stuff. And so that's what I thought. I thought, Wow groundbreaking starships they must have thought about this they must have consulted all the scientists and thought eventually we're going to get there because that is our plotted trajectory as a species that's what the science says is coming up and all this and I just don't think it is no no because how does that I, make you feel well, <laughs> well, well <laughs> You, 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 see, you don't think spaceships are real? No, no, I mean, because I started going into film and production mm. and I started thinking, because I started doing some uh, sci-fi stuff mm-hmm. myself. I even went to the US to do some sci-fi filming stuff. It's been quite a successful journey, if you don't mind me saying. No, okay. Well, yeah. And Just take the compliment. I'll take the compliment. So... And thinking about, because I started thinking about storylines, etc. And okay, what equipment have we got and all this? And it, I don't know how it exactly it dawned on me, but I somehow eventually stumbled upon what I believe was why we ended up with warp drives, shields, phasers, teleporters on shows like that. And that was because each of those technologies solves a production issue a production problem that needed to be overcome when you're coming up with a sci-fi show and you are limited by 1970s technology and the budget of a tv show what are you going to do well we're going to have a a a battle in space the spaceships are going to be blown up well we've only got the production budget to build a few of these spaceships how are we going to blow up the spaceships that's one problem second problem well they're, they're going to you know fly down to the planet in a space shuttle are we going to do we have a full scale model of a uh, of a space shuttle are we going to reel it in is it going to be wild and reel it in to the set every time we need it well I don't know do we have room for that budget um, what about phases what about uh, shooting rockets and phases uh, sorry shooting rockets in space during the space battle well that's going to be real difficult do we just you know put wires and just shoot them as fireworks through the wires what's well, the safety thing as well yeah, do I we guess. blow up the spaceship that mm, way mm, and mm. after we blow up the spaceships do we make more spaceships right right and so these distances they're so far Mm. By the time we get to another star, the people in the original part of the plot would have died of old age. How do we get around that? So I think that each of these things was created in order to solve all these problems. So you've got warp. Warp is literally a warp in the space-time continuum so that you can reach your destination and only a small fraction amount of time has passed. And that was very specific so that 
the the storyline they could warp somewhere warp somewhere and warp back and it would be roughly in the same relative frame of space that audiences are used to say on earth when you go to certain places and come back um so okay i have i have several several things to say do okay. share do i share. will say this yeah that yeah written science fiction Mm -hmm. preceded visual science fiction in the form of TV shows like Star Trek and things like that where they had those technologies in the written form where they weren't limited by production values they were only limited by the imagination or like comics and not like anything possible with a comic things like that I mean all the way back to Asimov really Isaac what what do you mean Asimov so like you know um, intelligent robots Things like uh, traveling to different solar systems. Yes, but did they have literally warp technology as an example? I'm not 100% sure on that, but yeah. I'm reasonably confident that warp is borrowed from written text and then taken okay. from from written sci-fi and then put onto the screen. So right. I would say that, not to diminish your your thesis though because i would say that those same problems had to be overcome in the written form and it's not so much from a production point of view but more like if as a human race we're going to be exploring these distant star systems how do we get there right good point let's invent warp well yes like hey that is a very good point so what i would take from that point is maybe that there was a smorgasbord of options that preceded them Mm -hmm. and maybe they chose the options that best solved their issues so like as an example the um the 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 phases Mm -hmm. okay that solved the issue of firing rockets at different spaceships you literally just needed to overexpose the film Mm -hmm. for a few frames and it looked like a a phaser Mm -hmm. looked like a laser and that was easy to do uh teleporting all they needed to do was fade the uh film with say something like a flash and they would just like like i dream of genie but a bit more in depth yeah um and so that was transporters Mm -hmm. phases shields well that solved the issue of showing spaceships getting damaged they couldn't they didn't have the budget so with with shields they could say oh shields at 80 percent captain shields at 60 mm-hmm. percent and you don't need to show anything yeah so and and they would just wire some charges on the bridge mm-hmm. shake the camera a bit and they've solved all of those issues mm-hmm. um so in the written form yeah those same problems persisted but they persisted from a character's point of view right so you don't want to kill your your primary antagonist and you don't want to kill your hero Uh but they're in a battle with all this advanced technology Mm. how do you keep them alive how do you how do you get to the third book do you know what i mean how do you how do you sort of solve the issues of such advanced technologies where you could basically wipe out a spaceship with the press of a button using you know advanced space lasers or whatever the case is well, you develop a shield, right? You develop shields so that mm. with offensive technology, there must be a, a, a repercussive, uh, yeah, defensive technology to 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 match it and to, to match it, and and in some ways preserve the the storyline and the plot of of the of the book, right? Mm. You don't want to. It would be too easy to blow up a distant planet with the press of a button. No, we need fleets of starships. We need fleets of, of you know, um, spaceships that can basically warp to different locations yeah. within within a galaxy um, and have direct ship on ship conflict instead of just um, warping in a giant gun, which is controlled remotely mm. and just pressing a button and blowing up a planet. Right. That is also. You know what that that shows two sides you've got the side that i was talking about which is about how these technologies may well i'm saying that they maybe they were introduced to 
solve production issues. But then you have the other side, like what's with Star Wars in episode uh, episode eight, The Last Jedi, was it? I think it was yeah, episode well, eight. Yeah. Episode nine was Rise of Scorn. Yeah, so yeah, episode, episode eight was where <clears throat> Holdo did the Holdo maneuver, uh-huh. and that was the light speed jump. Now, if that was the case, and you did a light speed jump, then that weapon technically would be so powerful you'd wonder why they'd never used it before Mm -hmm. Um, so it shows that they have this technology say to what to to enter light speed but then they have to not use it because then that would also upset (coughs) the The balance of power in the narrative right yes yes so and then he broke it and then I remember in episode nine, they said, well, what about we go into light speed? Oh, no, that shot was one in a, was one in a million. And that was all they said about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like a slap in the face. Yeah. There it is. Look at that. It's a very short clip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of arguments of they've broken their own law. <clears throat> yeah. In that particular example. Mm. I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, yeah. I can understand from a uh, sort of a technical side of, okay, it's the 70s when they initially started Star Wars. Mm. How are we going to shoot spaceships? Well, <clears throat> well, they don't exist, <clears throat> so we're going to have to get a bit creative. They did miniatures, and it's still yeah. quite uh, impressive to this day. But yeah. And, and, yeah, Star Wars, as an example... They utilized um, creativity to solve a problem because you can't go Actually, to space they, and shoot you know spaceships. You are right. In Star Wars, they blew up spaceships by simply substituting the spaceship for a little explosion mm. instantly. Mm-hmm. That's how they shot the TIE yeah, fighters. They just edited. Mm. Mm. But I think uh, as a general, I don't think the evolution of sci-fi has progressed due to what what I think you're saying is that they're doing that to solve a problem from a story perspective right well I think of that that probably was true back then but now well, that's what I was going to say it, it has it has it progressed or it's kind of we're still cre- using these legacy creole. ideas yeah it's 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 turned into a uh, genre just like Lord of the Rings, you've got dragons and mm. trolls and goblins and wizards. Now you've got the sci-fi, which is spaceships and lasers and warp drives and, and teleporters and all that. And that's now like, it's a genre, it's a thing of, of itself and people will make films of that genre instead of mm. going, okay, that was the first thing, let's evolve that and keep evolving it. No, 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 that's a genre now. Mm. Yeah, so. but I think the interesting part is that right on the edges of that sci-fi genre, uh, interesting ideas that are happening now in film, things like in um, Interstellar, right? Hard sci-fi. Hard sci-fi. Hard sci-fi, sci-fi where you can reach out and basically touch That's it. That's what I like to. Yeah. Okay. Where you know. Yeah, the, fantasy sci-fi and hard sci-fi. Yeah, the 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 artificial intelligent robot is not your humanoid robot, right? It's mm. not even a sort of R two D two or C three PO type situation it's basically a series of blocks that can self-assemble into different shapes to make itself the most the most Uh, useful possible shape you know what i mean like yeah yeah that sort of stuff is is kind of right on the fringe if you ask me because it doesn't adhere to any of the traditional sci-fi norms that's right um the other thing that they sort of tackle quite interestingly is the passage of time when you're traveling through space right because of space Nolan time. Loves that. Nolan loves He to loves play that with stuff, time. right? Obviously, you know, you one one hour here is fifty days back on yeah. Earth and well, then you're stuck seen, on this planet for twelve minutes it, and yeah. you know, it's that sort of stuff, when you do the hard physics calculations of it and you interpret it on the screen, it's it's close enough of, to true to, to make you actually believe and and I think that is yeah. kind of I think where the genre needs to move to because mm. Science borrows heavily from science fiction, right? When you look at where we're going with science and, 
And isn't it the other way around? I don't think so. I think science fiction comes first. But isn't science a fiction? Science fiction a fiction version of science? Yeah, but it, is, but it's yeah. it's so advanced that it's unattainable, right? So what science is trying to do is bridge that gap. So for instance, Elon Musk with Starship, right? He's like, let's let's go to Mars. Why aren't we going to Mars? We've been to the moon. We didn't go to the moon for a while. Let's go to the moon again. And then from there, let's go to Mars. And why aren't we at Mars? And he's like you and me. He's like, when I was a kid, we were supposed we were to be in Mars it, yeah. like two years after the moon landing. Mm. What the hell happened? So he's making it happen. But if you have a look at his renders for Starship, they hearken back to like 70s sci-fi. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a big chrome thing, yeah. shiny as all hell, with massive booster rockets yeah. and and like Steel. windows on it and... And you're like, man, this is like crazy. Like, wouldn't you just have like a camera on the outside and then project it onto a screen on the inside? Why would you even need windows, right? You've got like, now you've got, now you've got 8K resolution, massive televisions that are flexible that you could just stick to the inside of the spaceship. And that would, that would solve the problems of having, you know, different materials on the exterior of the spaceship and, and then having to solve for uh, things like heat radiation or, or um, space radiation and improving the shielding for the astronauts and all that sort of stuff. You mm. just make the whole thing a giant silver cone and, and stick a couple of you know, GoPro weights on the <laughs> outside and Bob's your uncle. But, but no, he's going the whole hog with the windows and, and you know, the, the big shiny rocket. And yeah. I think, you know, back to my point, a lot of the uh, earlier sci-fi predicts current day science and current day sci-fi will predict future science. 